In this video, we will learn about API Gateway Pattern and how to integrate this API Gateway Pattern in our Spring Boot microservices project. We'll be using Spring Cloud Gateway MVC as the API Gateway library. So without any further delay, let's start the video. An API Gateway actually acts as an entry point uh, for all the requests into our system. And we can mainly forward the incoming requests to the downstream microservices using an API Gateway. And also API Gateway is a very commonly used component inside the distributed system and microservices architecture. Let's see this with an example. So in our present system landscape, we have our product service, order service, and the inventory service. And the order service is running on localhost 8080, order service on 8081, and inventory service on 8082. If a user wants to call the product service, we are calling with URL localhost 8080. This is fine for the local dev environment, but if we move to production, we will be using a different URL and at any point of time there can be changes to this product service imagine that if we want to create a new microservice from the product service called as product promotion service or product category service the client has to manually change the url of the service so in this case the client can be a web application a mobile browser or maybe a desktop application whatever it can be so another problem is in we can have multiple instances of a service running inside our uh, project right so for example we can have three instances of product service two instances of order service and only just maybe one instance of inventory service and if one instance of product service is going down then if we hard code the url of the product service which is in the middle then the clients cannot access a product service anymore so this is not really an acceptable situation so for this as a solution we can introduce an api gateway which acts like an entry point as I said, for our the for all the requests to our system. So if at all in the future there is a change to the product service, all we have to do is to we have to change the path URL of the product service inside the API gateway, and the clients don't even understand, don't even know that something has changed inside our product service. So this is one of the advantages of using a, a API gateway. Another advantage is uh, an API gateway handles cross-cutting concerns like implementing security like authentication and authorization. Uh, it also helps us to implement monitoring, rate limiting, also SSL termination. We will see how to handle some of these cross-cutting concerns in this in this project in this tutorial series. So there are also some drawbacks of using an API gateway, one of which is it increases the complexity of the system as we have to maintain yet another component in our system landscape. Another Disadvantage is it needs a lot of effort to maintain a new component because this API gateway acts as a single point of failure. Because as you can see here, if the API gateway goes down, then the clients cannot access the our application anymore. And another another draw, drawback of using an API gateway is it increases the latency of the client request because the, the client first calls the API gateway and the API gateway calls the actual internal microservice. So this introduces a bit of latency whenever you want to use an API gateway in your project. So as I mentioned before, we'll be using Spring Cloud Gateway MVC project instead of Spring Cloud Gateway because the Spring Cloud MVC is based on Spring MVC and Tomcat. As you can see here in the documentation section, the Spring Cloud Gateway project provides libraries for building an API gateway on top of Spring Web Flux or Spring Web MVC. It also provides us out of the box features for to match the routes on any request attribute and to be able to apply predicates and filters for the specific routes. It also provides us a good circuit breaker integration. We'll have a look at all these integrations and all these topics in the in this tutorial. So to get started with the API Gateway project, I'm going to open the star.spring.io website. And in here, I've already pre-selected the project as Maven the Spring Boot version as the latest Spring Boot version. The, I have provided some project metadata, the artifact ID as API Gateway, the Java version as Java 21, and I have added the dependency called as Gateway. So make, su make sure that you add the dependency for Gateway, but not Reactive Gateway. So if you just click on Add Dependencies and search for Gateway, you will see another option called as Reactive Gateway. Don't use this option, but just uh, use the option gateway so that we will use the Spring Cloud Gateway MVC project. So once this is done, click on the generate button to download the project to your local machine. So I've opened the API Gateway project inside my IDE. And if I open the source main Java folder, 
here you will have the API gateway application which is not uh, nothing but a normal Spring Boot application. Here I'm going to create a new class called as routes inside a package called as routes and on top of this class I'm going to add the configuration annotation and inside this uh, class we have to define all the routing rules for our API gateway. Right. So if you want to access the product service, we need to define the rules to forward this request from the API gateway to the product service and order service and the inventory service. So for that, we need to create uh, some beans. So for that, I'm going to add the bean annotation and I'm going to type public router function of server response. And this is going to call, I'm going to call this method as product service route. And inside the method, I'm going to add a return statement and I'm going to use gateway router functions dot route and I'm going to provide the route ID as product underscore service. Next, we need to add uh, the actual route definition where we have the first argument as a request predicate. So I'm going to provide a request predicates dot path and in here I'm going to provide the path of the predicate as slash API slash product and now I'm going to type handler functions dot HTTP and in here I'm going to provide the value HTTP localhost 8080 and then I'm going to end this by adding the build method. So what we are doing inside this method is we first of all we are using we are using a different programming model called as functional endpoint programming model. So if I open the Spring MVC, Spring Web MVC documentation, you can see that Spring Web MVC includes webmvc.fn, a lightweight functional programming model in which functions are used to route and handle requests and contracts are designed for immutability. So we know all know that uh, in a normal Spring MVC, we use annotations to define get mapping, post mapping and other mappings. Using functional endpoints, we can do this, uh, the same, we can write the same endpoints using a different programming model. So for example, if you want to define, a, if you want to define a get mapping, all you have to do is route.get. We have to define a method called as get. And inside this method, we have to provide the URL uh, in which we have to define the get endpoint and we, we can define the headers. For example, we want to have an accept header of application JSON. And finally, we can provide the handler method, which will be executed whenever get endpoint is called. So if you see that here inside this get person, we have one method, which is taking a server request as an input and it is giving the server response as the response. So this is a, an alternative way of creating uh, endpoints using functional endpoint style. So we'll be using this same mechanism also in Spring Cloud Gateway MVC. So let's go back to our IDE and now going back to the route definition here, we have defined a route for the product service. And inside this route method, we are defining a rule where if the URL path is slash API slash product, then we have to forward this particular request to the URL HTTP localhost 8080. We are doing this with the help of handler functions dot HTTP method. So inside this request predicates method, we have a lot more methods. Path is the one of the method. If I go inside the request predicates class, you can see that it's an implementation of a request predicate that implements various request matching operations such as matching, matching based on path, HTTP method, etc. So the path method here matches based on the URL path. So this is one option. So we have other options like headers. So if you want to make sure that whenever there is a header called X, header A inside the request, then we want to forward this to product service. So we can also create a predicate based on the content type and the accept header so in, a, in the same way, we can also create a predicate for get method. So you can see that it matches this predicate if the request HTTP method is get and the given pattern matches the request pattern. So we can also rewrite this particular as this particular path method as get and provide the string pattern which we want to match. So now let's do a test if this particular route is working or not. So I'm going to uh, run the uh, API gateway application and you see that we are getting a error because the port 8080 is already taken by the product service. 
so we have to use a different port so for that i'm going to open the application.properties file and i'm going to write server.port equals 9000 because now i want to use the port 9000 for the api gateway so let's run the application again in the debug mode and now you can see that the application has started successfully on the port 9000 so now i've opened uh, postman and here i have the request localhost 9000 to the path app slash api slash product so i'm going to click on send here and let's see if you are getting a response or not Indeed, we are getting a response so our api gateway is able to successfully forward the request to the product service and it is also displaying the response from the product service to us so in the same way let's go ahead and implement the routes for the product service and the inventory service so I'm going back to the IDE and inside the routes class, I'm going to just copy this product service function route function and I'm going to paste this and rename the method as order service route and the route ID as order underscore service, the path as slash API slash order, the host name to which we want to forward is going to be localhost 8081 in the same way i'm going to copy and paste it and rename the order service to inventory service change the route id from order service to inventory service change the path to slash api slash inventory and finally i'm going to also change the url to localhost 8082 so after adding this configuration i'm going to restart the api gateway application I'm going to click on stop and rerun and now I'm going to open the postman and I'm going to find the request for the submit order so here I have the request for localhost 9000 slash API slash order I'm going to provide the body to the request payload to create the order to submit an order so I'm going to click on send and you can see that I got a response order placed successfully so let's also make a call to the inventory service. So I'm going to find the request for the inventory service. And here I already have one request which is ready, which is making a call to inventory service, which is SKU code as iPhone 15 and quantity as 10. So let's make a call. And you can see that we are getting a response as true. That's good. Let's now make another call. Now this time I'm going to provide the quantity as 110 instead of 10 and you can see that we are getting the response as false because we have defined the quantity for iphone 15 as 100 so that's why if we want to have a quantity of 110 then we will return then we will get a response as false so in this way we can create a api gateway which can act as an entry point for all our microservices so that's it for this video i will see you in the next part where we will implement security for in our project using Keycloak. So I will see you in the next video. Until then, happy coding techies.